If you were on your way to Mars, do you know what you would be packing in your bag? Well, in an effort to tackle many of the problems facing future astronauts who will be making the 140 million mile journey to Mars, NASA has interestingly turned to crowdsourcing in an effort to get some of those answers they want. That's right, Madison, they're asking people like you and I, everyday people, to quote, write down their ideas in detail for developing the elements of space pioneering necessary to establish a continuous human presence on the red planet. This could include anything from shelter, food, water, the way they get exercise, the way they get energy even. So we see for the first time that they're kind of engaging us with plans to go to Mars, which is really cool because we're not scientists. We don't, we don't know the science behind all this stuff, but they want to get us involved. This is how I see it. When we plant our flag on the moon, whether we land a rover on a comet, even going to Mars, whatever it be, I think it's a step forward for humanity, not just the space agency like NASA involved. I think it's humanity as a whole pushing the limits, breaking new barriers. So I think it's cool that we potentially could have a say in all of this. NASA's rewarding $5,000 to anybody whose ideas can be considered great and they'll, they'll go through with it, you get 5,000 bucks. That's pretty cool. You have any ideas for yeah, that? Yeah, I think that's exciting, space exploration, the unknown, and engaging the public and kids yeah. to start thinking of innovative ways. And also it's creative to start thinking of where our future may be and how can we improve it and where could it be possibly in 50 years from now or 100 years. Do you think they're asking us, the laymans, because they actually are stumped themselves, the, the big scientists at NASA. I mean, why, why else would they be asking the people who don't know anything? Is it for fun? Are they trying to get us involved? Or they're kind of stumped themselves and they need some fresh, out-of-the-box, third-party views from... Well, I think in 2015, we probably know a lot, a, probably a, a, too much, actually, to where we know. So I think that they're probably, maybe they could be one or two things to get people excited again about space, considering um, right now we know what's past even all of these black holes and Milky Way, that there's Earths beyond here, but also to maybe just educate people to get back into space programming. Maybe get some excitement going exactly. towards... We're exactly. We're set to go to Mars, and sometime, they don't have an exact date, but in the 2030s, they're thinking around then. Right. So, I don't know, I, I kind of have one little thing. I mean, I can't go into the details of stuff, but I think one thing that would be definitely necessary would be 3D printing. Mm -hmm. Let's say you got a wrench on Mars, you break your wrench. You're not going to go back to Earth to get a new wrench. Boom, you print whatever you need right there. You need new moon boots, boom, you print them. I think 3D printing would be the one thing that would be absolutely necessary. Of course, after pressurized chambers with air and water and all the obvious stuff. We want to know what you guys think, if you have any cool ideas that uh, could potentially send your idea to the, to the Red Planet, let us know. And also, you should definitely think about actually sending these ideas to NASA and participating if you think it's a worthwhile idea. Let us know what you guys think by commenting below. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the LibTV2 for more.